How do I pass my home inspection? This is one of the top questions I get from both buyers and sellers, which is very interesting to me that buyers ask about it since it's the seller's home that's being inspected. But everyone wants to know how to best get through this part of the real estate process. We're gonna talk about the top things to look out for in both buyers and sellers to get through this process. Now stick around to the end for information on our free report detailing this information as well. We're gonna answer a lot of questions in this video, so please stick around to the end because it's gonna be worth your time. Okay, first, some good news. Since 2017, there are no required repairs in the state of Arizona. Now, some states may have authorities who do inspections to determine the house's suitability for sale, but that is not the case in Arizona. An inspection isn't even actually required, although we do recommend it. Also, to clarify, in addition to no required repairs in Arizona, there's also no longer an as-is sale. You may still see some buyers and sellers using this term. The standard language of the purchase contract says that the home is being sold in its present physical condition, but it also makes allowances for the buyers to do their inspection to know what is going on with the house. A couple of key things to know and be aware of. It is the buyer's obligation to investigate and verify all matters of importance to them, while it's the seller's obligation to disclose everything they know about the property. This is important. One of the biggest areas of lawsuits here in Arizona deals with non-disclosure, and this could increase given the pace of our current market as well. This is the first trap, either not disclosing what you know as a seller or as a buyer relying solely on what is initially disclosed instead of pursuing more information from either the seller or one or more home inspectors. Subtrap, in flips or remodels that were not the primary residence of the sellers, the seller may try to say that there are no disclosures since they did not live in the home. Wrong. Residency is not a requirement for disclosure. They still know what happened in the property to some extent. In fact, they may know more about the home than someone who had lived in it since they had work done to it. So if you're a buyer, demand that information. And if you're a seller, do your best to disclose what you know, even if that's limited. While there are no required repairs, if the buyers and sellers cannot agree on any repairs that need to be made, there is a process by which the buyer could get out of the transaction and retain their earnest money. This may be complicated, so let us know if you have any questions, especially before you get into a transaction. Okay, trap number two. It is important to note that a home inspector is a licensed trade in the state of Arizona. There is training required and a basic level for competency. Like all professions, you can get some great ones and you can also get some not so great ones. Their job is to help identify what's going on with the house to the buyers. There are limitations to their scope of work there, so make sure you're aware of what that is on the front end. Here's a fun point. Arizona used to be a buyer beware state, in case you've heard the phrase caveat emptor. But we've moved on to our current one of investigation and disclosure. It can be a fine line between identifying potential issues with the home and assigning a specific level of concern to it, especially for newer first time buyers. So do try to stick to material facts on your inspections. Trap number three, thinking that there is only one type of inspection. While a licensed home inspector will perform a general inspection of the house covering all the systems, which we'll discuss in just a moment, there are more specialized inspections that may be needed given some of the findings of the original inspector. You might want to have an HVAC technician or a pool company come out for different things, maybe an electrician or a plumber, depending upon the types of things that may be found in the home inspection. One more point on the inspections themselves. While it is currently more rare to have a buyer using an FHA or VA loan, if they are, then there are certain safety items that may be called out by the appraiser, not the inspector, that would be required to correct before the transaction closes. Again, it's more rare, but if it does happen, it's required. There is no negotiating on those repair points. So here are the top things to be aware of to pass your home inspection. Think of your home as a series of systems. The electrical, which includes your lights, switches, outlets, wiring, etc. 
your plumbing, both gas and water for fresh and wastewater, your HVAC systems for heating and cooling, your mechanical systems, your doors, windows, appliances, other moving parts, the structural for the foundation and floors, for the walls, the ceilings, and the roof. There are things to be aware of and to look out for for that fall into both new construction and resale. While we're talking about new construction, a uh, quick point, there are often several inspections or they may be called walkthroughs, as the builder often will want the buyer to be aware of items in the home as it passes through the construction process, framing, drywall, things of that nature. There is typically a big one close to the end of the construction process. It may be called an orientation or a blue tape meeting where the final major and minor issues need to be identified so they can be addressed before the sale is closed. Stay tuned for more videos in the future on winning in the new construction process because there's a lot of things to know about that. Okay, trap number four. In different regions of the valley, there may be area specific things to watch out for. For instance, in some areas, there may be cast iron sewer pipes that have degraded over time and need to be replaced. Or perhaps the home has polybutylene piping, or it may be that have a basement and that there are concerns that come with that. Possibly based on where it is, there may be expansive soils or fissures or caliche. So these are the types of things that are, tend to be regional in nature, so it's important to know if some of those factors are present for where this home is at. Now with resale, here are some of the top things to make sure to check out. There can be other traps. These are just some of the more common things that we experience, so it's a good start. First, electrical. Are any of the breakers over amped? Are any of them not functioning? Are the arc fault interrupters working correctly? Is there the correct amount of power coming into the home or is it underrated? Okay, here's a bonus on power. With more and more solar being on homes, it's important to get or to have on hand the information on the solar system. When was it installed? How much power does it deliver and what are the energy bills like with it? When is the lease done or when is the system obsolete? Uh, were the panels wrapped in pest preventative wiring? And what is the age of the roof when the solar was put on? Because if it was an old roof already, you might have an issue. Note that most inspectors will do nothing with a solar system other than identify if one is present. There may be an additional inspection that you want to have done. Now for plumbing, what is the water pressure going into the home? Is it on a municipal water supply or well water? Or is the water hauled to the property? If it's on a well, how deep is it? Is it shared? What does the well agreement look like? What is the piping type in the home and is it original or has it been replaced? Are there leaks under any of the sinks? What is the age and type of the water heater? For the wastewater system, is it a sewer or a septic system? Is the sewer connection clear or does it have obstructions? If it's a septic, what is the type of septic and the flow rate and when was it installed? Here's a tip. In Arizona, septic systems must be inspected and serviced or pumped within the previous six months of the closing of the transaction. Also, if you have a well, there should be certifications done when the home is sold. Now, on your HVAC systems, how old is the system? How many units are there and where are they at? Are they outside, in the attic, or on the roof? Are they still the outdated Freon or, or R22, or are they the newer Puron R410A? What are the temperature splits? Are the condensate lines clear or are the pans rusted? When was it last serviced? Is there a plenum air leak cooling your attic? Okay. Uh, mechanical, do the appliances work? How old are they? Do the windows work and what is the age and the material of them? Are there bad seals in the windows and doors? Do the doors close and latch or are they off balance? Structural issues, what are the foundation type or what is the foundation type and are there observable cracks or spalling from it? Is the driveway or garage or patios heaving? Are there settling cracks coming from the corners and windows and door frames? Do the doors and windows actually open or are they stuck? How old is the roof and what is the material? We typically have asphalt shingle or concrete tile with felt underlayment or flat foam. Are there observable leaks past or present? Is there termite activity that can be seen? Pools, here's a bonus. With pools and spas, a home inspector will generally check for leaks in the filter's plumbing, but usually not much else. A pool company can usually do even more inspections on the pressures, chemical balance, and other items of concern. You'll definitely want to know the age of the water. Yes, I said the age of the water, as well as the age and condition of the pool surface. Now, for all of these things, the good news is, is that a good inspector is typically gonna look for all of this and more, but it does give you a list as a prospective buyer or seller of things to be aware of when preparing the home for sale or viewing it if you're thinking of making an offer. Now, here's another tip. As a seller, you might consider paying to have an inspection done so you are aware of the items with your home in advance. Okay, 
Trap number five, not getting our free report on the traps. It's very simple, it's free, and it comes with no obligation. All you need to do is simply comment on this video. You can reach out to me directly at 480-401-2330, or you can direct message me. I'd be happy to, to get that to you. It's absolutely free and comes with no obligation. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. We will see you the next time. I'm Brett Saren with the North Valley Agents at Corcoran Platinum Irving.